He has been propagating unalloyed devotion to Sri Radha Krishna in the lineage of Sri Chaitanya Mahababhu throughout the world. His perfect devotional conduct has made him the role model for the entire Vaishnava community. He converts all the places he visits into theatres and earns boundless affection from the hearts of all Gaudiya Vaishnavas. This is the place where his delicate feet took first steps. This is the place where he performed extraordinary childhood activities. Our humble respects to this holy land. Jai Jai Gopardam. Jai Jai Gurudev. He is a saint by birth. Right from birth, he is detached from materialism. He would never get uh, distracted when meditating. He does not belong to this world. He is from Golok Vaikunt. We are very happy that we belong to that family, right, into which he was born. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And hold on, I got three more here. Hey, Hare Mo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This one? Yeah? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, who's going to get it? Childhood. The best part of a man's life. Childhood to most kids means running around, playing all sorts of games. Some even love reading books. <clears throat> but what would you say if a boy who from the age of seven itself was inclined toward meditation? His divine grace, Srila Bhakti Balab, Tirta Goswami Maharaj, even as a young boy, Kamakya Charan, he seemed to understand the higher purpose of life. He would sit to meditate and would instantly forget everything around. From childhood itself, he was different from other children. Uh, 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 all the children used to play, and he would sit in one place and meditate. Huh? If anyone disturbed him, he would cry. That particular evening, he was not to be found, and somehow somebody located him, and it was found that he was sitting with his eyes shut as if he was praying in private. He didn't want anybody to come to him. And people, other members pushed him. What has happened to you? And he was visibly annoyed and then he cried. But this particular situation could be understood only by his father. He came and asked everybody to leave. And then he said, why did you wake me up? He would go to a secluded place very often and sit for uh, meditation. He would immediately enter into trance and lose external consciousness. One time we even brought a doctor. He said, nothing happened leave him as he is and he will come back to consciousness automatically don't worry he used to be absorbed in divine feelings limited in speaking simple gentle grave straightforward detached from material objects and had no interest in material enjoyment it could be easily easily understood from his activities that he is not a person of this material world such were the childhood days of kamakya turan guhuroi he was born on the 24th of april 1924 in golpara assam after the prayers of his mother srimati Sudasu Balu Guhuroi and Father Sri Darendra Kumar Guhuroi after they had lost two of their children as infants. 
They had an offer prayers to Kamakya Devi in Gohati and hence the name Kamakya, Charan Guhuroi. He came into this world on the auspicious day of Ram Nomi, the birthday of Lord Ram. Before the birth of Guru Maharaj, his uh, elder brother and uh, sister passed away as infants. After those tragic incidents, my uh, grandmother prayed to Kamakya Devi in Guwahati and uh, Guru Maharaj was born. And that was the reason why he was given the name Kamakya Charan. Uh, there were four brothers and uh, six sisters. Um. Their family had ten, roughly, <laughs> and our family also. You see, we are a joint family. So altogether we are about 20 to 21, something like that. He was the fifth kid in his family. He was very good at mathematics. He was honored with a certificate in mathematics, Sanskrit, and geography in high school. But what captured the imagination of young Kamakya the most was finding his way to the Almighty. Knowing his tendencies to sit alone and meditate, his father would not let him alone. But young Kamakya would meditate as soon as his father would leave the house or, or get busy with work. One time almost all the family members went uh, for a pleasure trip and Guru Maharaj also joined them. He was 10 years old then. All of them climbed the mountain and as they reached the highest spots, they found many forest flowers. Everybody including Guru Maharaj picked the flowers. After some time, Guru Maharaj told uh, that he'll go back home. One person from the group accompanied him up to a distance and from there, he went back home by himself. Later, when all the other members returned home from the pleasure trip, they saw that their house surrounded by many local persons. They waded through the crowd and entered the house wondering what had happened. Then they saw Maharaj sitting on the lap of our grandfather. He was crying, his eyes filled with tears. When they asked what happened, they were informed that after Maharaj returned home, he offered the flower to the picture of Lord in front of the main door and sat for meditating. At the time of this incident, only my grandfather, grandmother and cook were present in the house. When the cook suddenly noticed Maharaj in the house, he called him. But Maharaj did not respond or move in the slightest. Then he complained to my grandfather. When my grandfather saw that he was not disturbed even when shaken intensely, he forcefully lifted Guru Maharaj and placed him on his lap. Then Maharaj said, why did you disturb me? Saying this, he cried. He was strongly inclined to spirituality right from childhood. He used to regularly worship and meditate. He would bring flowers, offering to the Lord and sit for meditation. Others would try to disturb him, but uh, it was very hard to divert his mind while in meditation. This is truly astonishing. One time he was uh, not found for two to three days and everybody in the house became worried. After searching for three days, he was finally found sitting on a mountain in a deep meditation. There was a temple of Lord Shiva behind our house. Whenever we didn't see him at home, we found him meditating in the temple. Finding the man physically is one thing. But finding the purpose of his existence is totally another. The young heart of Kamakya was filled with love for God and he wanted to devote his life for his service. In his early childhood itself, his tongue had discovered the sweet addiction to Harinam. Every evening there was Hari Loot, where all of us would stand and clap. Sugar candies were distributed after the ceremony. All the children would gather and sing, Hari Lute, Baha Lute, Lute Nere Torai. He would also attend, but he would be overcome with divine feelings, totally distinct from others. We could not understand his mood at that time. In a Barakpur house, he would say to me, sit here, close your eyes and chant the Lord's name. 
and after closing my eyes i would think of everything other than the lord i did not understand the significance then so he would make me chant every day and then say now you take bath take food and get ready for school he asked me to chant krishna's 100 names jay jay govinda gopal gadadhar every day when i wrote a letter expressing my incapability to chant every day due to my many other engagements he would reply you are able to do all other things it is good but you are not able to chant hari naam this is not good you should chant the lord's name first thing every day the 1920s and 30s was a time in india when common householders used to visit the intuitive saints in their vicinity it was indicated that young kamakya was not an ordinary boy after all A saint came to our house when Maharaj was very young and told this boy will not enter family life if you wish to contain him in the household you have to get him married as soon as he finishes the education and gets employment otherwise he will leave the house the saint also said if he does leave the house the entire planet will be benefited once one saint named Bharat Maharaj came to Assam then Maharaj was a school student among other persons who attended his discourse bharat maharaj wanted to take our brother along with him he was being brought up by his grandmother as his mother expired he asked our grandmother for permission but she denied he then said you are not giving kamakya to me today but one day he will leave you all anyway the prediction was for the future but young kamakya's conduct did hint that the destined prediction might come true he would never argue with elders even if he was not at fault he would not show any disagreement with them he would quietly listen to them he was equally affectionate and caring with the younger kids he would guide us and correct our mistakes immediately my father used to say that uh, his activities resembled that of uh, shravan kumar as uh, He was highly obedient to mother and father. He told me there are three modes of nature: goodness, passion, and ignorance. The food you eat has an influence on your nature, so stop eating the food in low modes and ascend to the mode of goodness. <laughs> He would say to all of us, "Do not eat food in the mode of ignorance. Always chant the Lord's name." We were all small then and used to follow his instructions. Our father used to scold us. The elders would fear that children may fall in the nearby Kasimitra pond while playing. They would not allow them to go out of the house in the afternoon. So one strict paternal uncle of my father would ask the children to count from 1 to 100 or 200. The children would wait for him to fall asleep. As soon as he fell asleep, they would leave the house slowly one after another. But Maharaj would sit and count the numbers. He would not leave the house until he finished counting up to hundred, as ordered by his uncle. When the uncle's sleep was disturbed, he awoke to find no other child except Maharaj sitting in the house. Then he used to say, "All children escaped, but this innocent boy is still here, counting the numbers, and still he is counting numbers." there was one kind of insect which we usually killed because when its hair touched any part of the body it caused itching and irritation when maharaj saw us killing he told why do you kill the poor insect remove the part of that insect which is harmful but please do not kill this poor insect this was the heart of kamakya His educational background was also very sound. In 1942, at the age of 18, Kamakya completed his higher secondary from Cotton College, Guwahati. He then pursued his Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics, Philosophy, and Geography from Victoria College, Kuchbihar. While he was studying in Kolkata University, He used to go directly to the library after class. He used to read in the library for for hours and hours 
with uh, undivided attention. Everybody used to say he was very dedicated towards studies. His unwavering focus captured the attention of everyone in the library. After completing his MA, he gave an interview for uh, SES, Assam Administrative. And uh, as far as my memory goes, that interview was held at Guwahati. And during that time, he stayed in the house of a distant relative. Wearing a dhoti and kurta, he left for the interview. And upon seeing him, the other interviewees thought, British persons are taking the interview and he has come with Indian attire. How can he get the job? Everybody was interviewed for five to six minutes. When Maharaj's turn came, he was interviewed for 20 minutes. The interviewers were so much impressed with him that they did not give any attention to his attire. Simplicity, however, does not substitute the need for money. Money runs the world and the world runs after money. But this vicious cycle never affected Kamakya. After completing his BA, he stayed in Gwalpada for some time and there he taught in a school. It was, it was girls' school. He would give his uh, entire salary in the hands of my grandfather. Thus my grandfather would take care of all his necessities. He knew that he wouldn't ask for the money he needed for commuting, even if he had to walk. My father-in-law said, you are giving all your earned money to me, keep some for yourself. But he would say, I have no expenditure. Although there was a cook in the house, my grandmother personally served him. Because he used to eat all that was served. If plenty was served, he would eat it all. If a little was served, he won't ask for more. He was averse to anything material. And anything or, in other words, anything that appeals to senses. He, he couldn't care less for that. Anything that appeals to spirit while he was falling. And he chose this marble from that day, from his young days. Each man takes the path according to his capacity, understanding and temperament. His true guru will meet him along that path. It was time for Kamakya, for such a divine encounter with his guru. In the year 1944, Kamakya attended a Hari Sabda in Gopara, which was presided by Srila Bhakti Daita. Ishvara Parama Krishna, Sachidananda Vigra, Anadiradi Govinda, Sarabakarana Karana. Ishvara to have a kind of mante, like in Krishna, Ishvara Matrani, Ishita Jisko Hai, or Santa Jisko Uski Shakit. अभी ये उच्चर्ज इसी तरह जिसमें चरम व परम है, उनको कहते हैं परम ईश्वर, ईश्वरा परमा वो कौन है कृष्णा, ईश्वरा परमा कृष्णा कैसा है? परमेश्वर तो कोई स्वरूप नहीं है, वो तो अरूप है, निराकर है, निर्विशेष है, हे भाई, जरा ध्यान दो, चरम तत्व को भी निर्विशेष नहीं हो सकता है। चरम कारण कनाड़ भी नहीं विशेष, चरम तत्व कनाड़ भी नहीं आकर, किसलिए निर्विशेष विशेषण रहित जब चरम कारण चरम कारण हो जाए, तो उसको कुछ किया नहीं हो सकता, उसका अवतार आदि, उसको सिस्टी सिस्टी आदि कुछ कम नहीं हो सकता, निर्विशेष विशेषण रहित, इसलिए परतत्व कनाड़ भी नहीं विशेष, it will be irrational talk. Young Kamakya did not understand the lecture entirely, but could make out that the speaker was an ardent devotee of Lord Krishna. Param Gurudev spoke in Bengali. 
but the words were so complicated that Guru Maharaj could not fully comprehend the meaning. Although he did not understand the Harikatha of Param Gurudev entirely, he could gather that the speaker was an ardent devotee of Lord Shri Krishna. Kamakya's attraction to Srila Bhakti died to Madhava Goswami Maharaj, led him to believe that he might finally get his answers to the intriguing questions about spirituality. He wanted to know clearly by what method he could attain the Lord. Particularly, I remember Madhav Maharaj very well. He was a very bright-looking person, I mean, uh, and he, he was really attractive. I mean, uh, uh, also he used to speak very well. I mean, he was a very wise person, but well-read. Manaka Swami Maharaj was staying at the house of Sri Radha Mohan Bhagavan, a family friend of Kamakya. This offered him a chance for a one-on-one -on -one interaction. When Kamakya entered the house, he saw Manaka Swami Maharaj sitting on an elevated platform. He paid him his obeisance and instantly felt a blessing. He experienced the symptoms of ecstasy. He then sat down to ask his questions. Maharaj, when I chant the holy name, it seems as though I'll see the Lord any minute. Then I'll have to leave my home and family, giving up all the love I feel for them. This troubles me so much that I stop chanting. Please advise me. Madhav Goswami Maharaj smiled and praised the question. He then explained with the help of a story. A few geese were living by a stinky pond. They used to eat snails, clams and worms. One day, a few swans flying overhead saw the geese, a flock of their cousins, living in such a state. One of the swans thought to carry the geese to their place of residence, Mansarova, and descended. The geese saw the beautiful swan and thought if they could only live there, surely they would become as beautiful as a swan and be as happy as they. The geese asked if they could possibly come along with them to Mansarovar. To their greatest happiness, the swan said that he could take them away from this portrait place. The swan asked the geese to follow him, but there was one problem. The poor geese were unable to fly very far. The swan felt sorry for them, yet he wanted to help them. So he offered them a ride on his back. But the geese had another worry. They asked the swan whether they would find the snails, clams and worms there. The swan said that such disgusting things were not available there and that they lived on lotus stems and clear water. The geese began to shriek as if with one voice. Then how will we survive? After pondering, they finally decided not to go at all. The geese's attachments to other things kept them from going to live in very beautiful place. Similarly, our attachment to this perishable body and everything connected with it is an impediment to go to the Lord's abode. Supreme auspiciousness cannot be had unless one is freed from material wants, which is possible only through the association of advanced devotees. After the insightful interaction, the saints soon left Gopara, but Sri Radha Mohan Prabhu used to invite Kamakya to his house regularly. He showed him affection, spoke on various subjects pertaining to devotional life and offered him Bhagavat Prashad. My father would tell him, I will speak to you about the Lord. So he used to come to our house in the evening and listen to my father speak on Ramayana and Srimad Bhagavatam. My father used to say to him, you have to know what is the right path. Shri Krishna is the Supreme Lord. 
you must become his devotee he never used to sit on a chair in front of my father he would always sit on the floor he considered my father as his instructing guru and was highly obedient to him maharaj had very high respect for shri radha mohan prabhu and considered him as his path pradarshak guru that is instructing guru he wrote letters to shri madhav goswami maharaj from radha mohan prabhu's house shri radha mohan prabhu also asked him to come to his house if he were to face any difficulties over a period of time maharaj's heart was transformed and he developed a strong detachment to family life madhav goswami maharaj advised kamakya to study shrila bhakti you know to cause jaiva dharma in order to eradicate all doubts great in the book kamakya charan indeed found that the doubts which he had harbored for a long time were faced by the year 1947 kamakya had finished his ma and also had a government job in hand his family had also shifted to calcutta by then but his detachment to family life an inclination to devotional life was reaching a peak he wanted to seek the opinion of madhav goswami maharaj about his future maharaj i have been indifferent to the world for a long time i feel like renouncing it but i have a desire to enjoy therefore i am afraid of the thought of renouncing the world so will it be good for me to renounce the material world or not you may lack something but the supreme lord does not lack anything he is infinite his mercy has no limit however fallen we may be he will certainly shower his mercy otherwise his position as infinite will become nullified the enemies like lust etc cannot be conquered by our own power but when we surrender completely to him he will destroy those anti devotional elements and rescue us he is the protector and maintainer of a surrendered soul kamakya found much solace in gurudev's words however he was still in doubts whether to take the government job if you plan to follow a life of dedication that is with nivritti marg then give your life completely to the worship of the lord it makes no sense to take a government job on the other hand if you wish to follow the path of karma that is pravritti marg then worship the lord while staying at home in that case you should take the job seeing my innocence my father has more affection for me than for my brothers and sisters he has raised me educated me and has many expectations from me i now have a chance to earn money and serve him will i not incur sin if i leave him at this time in reply madhav goswami maharaj explained the verse from 18th chapter of shrima bhagavad gita sarva dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam vraj aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha yishyami ma shuchah if you come here by giving up all your responsibilities shri krishna will free you from all sins you need not worry about it or have any fear the stage for the inevitable was finally set young kamakya was ready to announce the world a jyoti and a towel was all that he took in preparation to leave home on the day he left our house i remember even now i was a little girl standing on one side of a room in a house in barakpur he had a white bundle i don't know what it contained he told my father that he was going to a friend's house and that he would benefit greatly from him none of us could understand that he was indicating the spiritual benefit one morning he wore a dhoti and kurta carried a towel and extra dhoti and set out to leave the house when asked where he was going he replied that he was going to his friend's house and would be benefited by going there it was only later that family understood that he meant guru and bhagwan as his friend and how this benefit he referred to was actually spiritual in nature
A son who did not know anything except father's love left him. It's impossible to understand the attraction he had for his guru. The early life of our simple saint Kamakya Chiranguhurai had now blossomed into the renunciate life of Sri Krishna, Vallabha Brahmachari. From here started the journey to show the path of Krishna Bhakti to the entire world. Maharaj always said that the word Krishna means one who attracts all and gives pleasure to all and also one who is always blissful. Guru Maharaj's nature is strikingly similar. Everyone in his house, siblings and cousins and other would be attracted by his nature. He is a very sincere, highly elevated devotee, Vaishnav. He does not belong to this world. He is a man from Golok Vaikunt. He came here to liberate everyone. I doubt if such a personality befitting a perfect Acharya will be seen in the future again.